So I started writing music, and then so many songs by the time I was in my 20s, and I had never recorded them professionally. I was recording on tape. If you're in your music class, and you had those tape recorders, if you're my age, 30, 40, they look, they look like this. And they were just for recording things and playing them back. So I would record most of my music on that. I thought it was pretty cool to record on tape. So, I literally was making mixtapes. I don't know what they call mixtape these days, but I was actually making mixtapes. 
where I would record my own music and then uh, so I'd have one song and then it would be a blank tape for the rest and I would go back and pick up where I left off and record another song. And by the time that um, mixed tape was done, I would have a tape of my original songs and then I would copy that tape onto a blank tape and give that to my friends. And uh, it's a long story and some of my close friends know this one, but um, I had about a shoebox full of original music and it was stolen from me. Um, and I, one day I went and got it back and then that turned into a thing where they were going to call the police. And in hindsight, I would do things differently. But at the time, I was like, well, I don't want to get the police involved. So I gave the person who stole all my original music, I gave it back to them. And then I made copies of that original music. So I wasn't just stupidly handing my own stuff back. I copied it first, which is still stupid, but I gave them the originals and I kept the copies. Imagine giving your masters away to somebody, Taylor Swift. So I gave my masters away to uh, somebody and then I copied them. Um, flash forward to when I was married. And I know a lot of you guys have been in abusive relationships. But uh, I got married young. I was 21 when I got married. I got divorced before I was, you know, I was 22 when I got divorced. I got the certificate. It was like 2000 and, 2005, 2006. I got the actual divorce certificate and I threw a divorce party. But anyway, um, I was talking about the, the song there. So Calgary Zoo is one of many that... Uh, I, so I was in this relationship. Let, let's just, I'll finish up that story. I know that some of you might be interested now. Kind of a, an abusive relationship in the sense that, uh, you know, I went out of my way to record my own music and then this woman I was married to threw out my tapes and then took the uh, CDs that I had recorded with bands and like scratched down uh, the CD so they were unplayable. So that type of abuse, uh, ruining my clothes, cutting my shirts, cutting my ties, making everything unusable. I know some of you have been in abusive relationships, and as a guy, it's not, um, it's becoming more and more socially acceptable to talk about being in abusive relationships, and, uh, I just feel like I learned from a lot of that, and, uh, I'm a better person today for having gone through that nonsense, because I wouldn't put up with it now. Um, so I recorded a bunch of music and a lot of it was lost over the years. So the first time I actually sat down in a studio to record my own music was in 2004, believe it or not. So born in 81, but actually sat in a studio to record something quasi-professionally in 2004. And the album that I recorded was called Songs About Home. And it's 12 or 13 songs, and it starts with uh, Jade. <laughs> this, is, this is Jade. <laughs> And then the Calgary Zoo is on that album. So if you go to my website, adamjosh.com, you can find all my albums that are there. So I'll, I label the ones that are done professionally and the ones that are done demo or myself at my home, like on a computer or whatever. So I try to differentiate. You'll hear the quality between them. And so uh, in, I started recording in 2004, you know, semi-professionally. Com of course, computers were available around that time that you could record uh, at home and didn't have to go to a studio anymore, but I still went to a studio for one other album, but I did like five acoustic albums by myself. Of course, you know, I've been in bands and whatnot, and that's completely unrelated to my own stuff. So yeah, my bands that I've been in have albums, and I've been on professional albums and whatnot as well. So here we are. Day 742 of the uh, lockdown. Episode 81 of the Morning Banana Show. We got news yesterday that the uh, government of Ontario pulled the trigger and said officially that the kids aren't coming back to uh, school this year. This school year. So this next school year starts in September. And uh, if you watch the Morning Banana Show, you'll know that not only did I predict that and did Desiree predicted that on uh, number 70, was it 79 or 78? But on number 77, I predicted it at about uh, five or six minutes into the video, you'll hear me saying, you know, they're not, the school year's over, it's not, they're not coming back. 
So I, I predicted that uh, with confidence because of the indicators that I was telling people who watch the show here, of um, the indicators that I see. You know, I, I'm not just one guy talking to a camera, and I don't think any of us are that isolated, but, uh, you know, I have family, I have friends, I have people in the business community, people know that I'm a, you know, manager of a, of a shop and, and what, what not, so we talk to people, and then on top of all that, I call people all over the world and have friends all over the world, you know, so I keep in touch with people, and I could see what was um, the indicators and what was coming down the pipe that way, um, and I made a prediction that I had pretty strong confidence about that the school year was over and uh, turns out I was right you know as usual at josh.com you can find all my predictions on twitter hashtag Adam Josh predictions I've had a twitter account since 2010 so it's the only social media that I use which is why I constantly refer you to it so I don't use tindergram I don't use uh, my face or any of the other nonsense. I'm not on Spotify. I read in an article that Joe Rogan signed a $100 million deal with Spotify to do his podcast. Good for you, Joe. So, uh, yeah. We're here. The lockdown. I'm a grade 4 TA. I'm a grade 1 TA. Yesterday I was teaching grade 4 to uh, our 9-year-old. And uh, I feel like I'm getting in the groove of that, you know. And... I said before on the last morning banana show where I was wearing a suit, I said that, um, you know, you're not going to catch me at the school protesting that it opens. Like, we, the, the system that we were under was broken. This is even more broken, but uh, you're never going to catch me being like, I want my kids to go back to school. <laughs> you know, unless you're paying for them to go to private school. You know, and you're really, you've really made an educated decision and a financial investment into your children's education. Private school for like, I'm talking like, you know, I have a seven and a nine year old. So you're investing into elementary school unless you're on that side of things. And I can't see any parent being like, I, I desperately want my child to be in a public school because, you know, other than just wanting to get your kids out of the house. <laughs> Or have some private time. I, I, I don't really see the reason that any pro any parent would protest that their kids go back to public school. <laughs> I wouldn't. So, um, what else can I say? We're here. You know. Um, the thing that you got to watch out for, and I'll, I'll talk about this now, um, but I haven't really mentioned it before. The thing that you have to watch out for if this lockdown drags on, <clears throat> talking to you one on one here, just me and you. Um, the thing that you have to watch out for if this lockdown drags on isn't. You don't have to worry about you being prepared. You don't have to worry about, like, I'm sure that people who watch me are buying some extra food, keeping a pantry stocked. I'm sure that you're pretty smart people. The thing that you have to watch out for between you and me is your crazy neighbors and people who lose everything. Because people who lose everything um, lose it. And there's no amount of uh, strategizing and planning that can accommodate and calculate and account for your crazy neighbors or people in your town or outside of your town who decide to start looting. So that's, that is what I would be concerned about if this lockdown continues because, you know, we consider ourselves the first world, um, but when the first world starves, the third world dies. So the third world is dependent on a lot of, um, first world charitable donations and whatnot. So, you know, you think you're okay and you're like, I'm set, I got food, my kids are taken care of, but what about your crazy neighbors? Have you thought about what you're going to do? Your windows are only so high, you know? 
people can break in. And I'm just saying, not to freak you out, but you should have some sort of game plan. The thing is, you can call the police, but before the police arrive, you should have a plan of, okay, well I called the police, but, you know, you still have a family, you still are hanging out with your kids or whatever, so their lives are more important than uh, waiting for a police officer to arrive, so sometimes you have to take matters into your own hands. Um, I recommend that if you can find a, a safe place in your house to legally and lawfully store a firearm. If not, baseball bat, knives and stabbing weapons. You can fortify your um, windows, you can fortify your house, but um, depending on where you live, like sometimes you just can't do enough and there's nothing, there's n no amount of prepping in the way of protecting your house that can protect. <sighs> so, something to keep in mind. Protect yourself. Alright everybody. That's pretty much it for the Morning Banana Show. Just wanted to check in, say hi, tell you guys I'm here. Find my guitar pick. And I'll play a song for you. There it is. I played Calgary Zoo. Now if you go to adamjars.com, you'll see the link under music for songs about home. So what I can do, what I can do right now, is play you the first song on the album. Chinese song right now called Tu Nini. Tu Nini. So I'm going to play you Jade. It's been a while since I played Jade.
Go to AdamJosh.com for the rest of the song. Follow me on Twitter at AdamJosh.com.